Obsidian is a naturally occurring glass that is created from the lava of a volcanic eruption. This glass is hard, brittle, and typically black in colour. Obsidian consists mainly of silica, also known as silicon dioxide, which is the same substance you'd find in a silica gel packet. Obsidian is created from the rapid cooling of rhyolitic lava, which comes from a rhyolitic volcanic eruption. Rhyolite is a type of volcanic rock that has high levels of silica, which makes it extremely viscous when in a molten state, such as magma or lava. The highly viscous rhyolitic lava forms thick and slow lava flows. Under the right conditions, some of these flows become obsidian flows. Obsidian flows don't look like your average lava flow. They appear as an extremely slow-moving mass of rock and can flow for kilometres, taking months at a time. Obsidian flows cool rapidly, causing any water within to escape, thus increasing the viscosity even further. This increased viscosity impedes crystallization, which is the process of solidifying a liquid into an ordered, rigid lattice. By impeding this process, the lava instead solidifies as a glass, which has a disordered but rigid structure. This glass is obsidian. Obsidian is a fairly strong substance, and depending on the type of obsidian being tested, it rates around 5 to 7 on the Mohs scale of mineral hardness. For reference, talc is rated 1, and diamonds are rated 10. When obsidian fractures, it results in a smooth, rounded surface with exceptionally sharp edges. This smooth, vaguely shell-shaped fracture is called a conchoidal fracture. Obsidian behaves this way because, unlike crystals, it has no regular structure. Though obsidian is mostly made up of silica, being anywhere from 60 to 80% silica, the rest of its chemical nature is highly variable. Because of this, and the fact that it is not a crystalline structure, means that it is not classed as a mineral, but instead a mineraloid. Obsidian forms in a variety of different colours, most often black or other very dark shades, but sometimes brown, red, green, lavender, blue, orange or yellow. Its translucency may vary from clear to opaque. These differences in appearance can be attributed to diverse factors, like the presence of gas bubbles, chemical variation, oxidation, or the incorporation of foreign materials. Other notable types of obsidian are snowflake obsidian, which is dotted with small white patches where parts of the cooling obsidian has begun to crystallize, sheen obsidian, which contains patterns of tiny gas bubbles that produce a metallic sheen effect, and rainbow obsidian, also known as fire obsidian, this is formed by the inclusion of crystal nanoparticles, which create a thin film that reflects vibrant colours. Obsidian is a word from the mid-17th century. It comes from the Latin obsidianus lapis, which was actually a misreading of the correct term obsianus lapis, which means stone of obsius. According to Pliny the Elder, Roman traveller Obsius is responsible for first discovering black obsidian in what is now modern-day Ethiopia. Individual obsidian flows all have highly distinctive chemical signatures. As a result, archaeologists can study obsidian artefacts as a way to determine ancient trade routes by taking into account where they found the artefact and comparing it to where the obsidian flow it came from is located. The earliest obsidian artefacts found date back to around 1.7 million years ago and are from a Paleolithic site in Ethiopia. By the time modern humans, or Homo sapiens, evolved, obsidian was not only being used, but it was also being procured from distant sources. It was an important raw material because its sharp edges were ideal for making tools. Obsidian could also be fractured to produce sharp blades or arrowheads in a process called napping. In the Middle East, a variety of obsidian artefacts have been discovered, including mirrors, bowls, vases and beads, and the obsidian used to make these had travelled upwards of 1,000 kilometres from their original geological sources. During the Bronze Age, metal became the preferred material for tool production in the Middle East and Europe, and so obsidian use dwindled. However, in the Americas, obsidian was used right up until indigenous traditions were replaced with colonial technologies. 
the pre-Columbian Mesoamerican's use of obsidian was extensive and sophisticated. In the Maya highlands, obsidian was available to all households, and it was found in everyday situations, such as hunting and agriculture. Obsidian also played a large role in many Native American cultures, which created intricate tools ranging from projectile points through to tattooing instruments. Obsidian was also featured heavily in some indigenous mythologies, and shamans were known to use obsidian blades in their ceremonies. Obsidian is still used to make extremely sharp knives, and some surgeons even use obsidian for scalpel blades, believing that they are useful in making fine incisions that heal with minimal scarring. This is because obsidian can produce cutting edges many times finer than even the best steel scalpels. This, however, has not been approved by the FDA. There are few other modern uses for obsidian, other than as a decorative stone for jewellery or ornaments. However, obsidian can be hydrated and heated in order to be turned into perlite, which does have a number of modern uses. Or, if you believe minerals hold mystical or metaphysical properties, you may wish to use your obsidian for looking deep into your inner being and revealing your shadow self, warding off negative energy, keeping your root chakra in check, healing digestive and gallbladder issues, blocking psychic attack, drawing out mental stress and tension, stimulating growth on all levels, and dissolving ancient traumas.